Now, the center of the greatest crisis in Europe um, uh, since the Second World War is, of course, one man, President Vladimir Putin. In an impassioned address to the nation on Monday, he set out in 7,500 rather rambling words his version of this region's history. It is that reading of history which motivates and, he claims, justifies his actions in Ukraine. Today is Defender of the Fatherland Day in Russia, and the man who has claimed that mantle for over two decades as president came to pay his respects at Moscow's much-visited Tomb of the Unknown Soldier this morning. The reason why Europe is now on the brink of war is largely because of one man's view of Russian history and his autocratic power to do something about it, alone with the demons that he wants to slay. <laughs> Vladimir Putin, the former KGB agent, used to like portraying himself as a man of action, in touch with nature, who went after fish, not countries. But Mr. Putin has evolved from this. In later life, he's retreated into a cocoon made of COVID, distrust and faith. He prefers his own company, even in church. Take this year's televised midnight mass in Moscow. While the congregation celebrated in the Christ the Saviour Cathedral, Putin was all alone with his maker, looking somber and a little uncomfortable. Vladimir Putin sees the Orthodox Church as the spiritual mantle of greater Russia the very reason for its birth. He was the driving force behind the creation of this giant statue at the gates of the Kremlin in 2016. Prince then Saint Vladimir, his namesake, converted to Orthodox Christianity in 988. This was the foundation of ancient Russia and he was its first ruler, its first protector of the fatherland. Except it all took place in Kyiv, where there is also a statue of the same saint erected 170 years ago. But here they call him Volodymyr, and they see him as the founder of the Ukrainian nation. His bones and the bones of many of Russia's other great saints are buried in the churches and monasteries of Kyiv. If Vladimir Putin were ever to enter the city as the conqueror, expect him to make a beeline for these places. This is his Temple Mount. In his view, there can be no reconstitution of Great Russia without its inclusion. How do we know that? Because he told us so on Monday on television. Еще раз подчеркну, что Украина для нас это не просто соседняя страна. Это неотъемлемая часть нашей собственной истории, культуры, духовного пространства. This was a stream of consciousness version of a 5,000 word essay that he wrote last summer as Putin the amateur historian. And there's the rub, rival versions of the same history. Putin told us again that the breakup of the Soviet Union was a disaster because it allowed Ukraine to break away, diminishing Russia and its historic claim to be a nation anchored in Europe. But that's not how the people of Ukraine see it. They've been defending their right to see the collapse of the Soviet Union as liberation from Moscow's tyranny. That is their version of the past, and they're prepared to pay for it in blood. It is an argument about rival interpretations of history, a clash of myths that threatens to become a clash of armies poised in the snow.